If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my last reading wrap up of 2022. These are the books that I finished or attempted to finish for last month of 2022. It went, eh, eh. I finished five books, DNF, so did not finish two. And I'm currently in the middle of two. So we're going to talk about them. This month was seriously all over the place. Um, I'm going to include the ones I didn't finish because they're going on my pile of shame, which if you don't know, that's what I call the books that I didn't finish but fully intend to life happened and this month was absolutely crazy with this one i will have posted like 17 videos so literally all i was doing in my free time was record and edit and at times where it's dark right now <laughs> it is so hard to fix the lighting i mean i just moved into this room right but i think i think it's going for like moody hopefully so the first book i did not finish actually that was the first book i attempted to read this month it was shards of earth by adrian jakovsky i've really enjoyed some of his work this is an adult sci-fi and i put it down at page just under 200 so 200 pages into the book i could just feel my last two brain cells fighting for their life <laughs> while i was reading this i could see that it was going to be amazing but is books usually are, but I just, I couldn't follow, literally. I felt so dumb. I haven't read a hard sci-fi in forever, and right now was just not the time. I had just too much going on, so officially on my pile of shame. We'll get back to it. It's okay. It happens. The next book I finished was Blacktop Wasteland. I wanted to try something else by the author because I read Reasonably Tears by him. Really loved it. Five stars. Made it to my best of the year, which, by the way, um, I mentioned in that video, I made a joke, I spoke in French. I put everywhere what it, what it meant, so hopefully you caught on. But basically, I've been calling this a dad recommendation. So I've made my dad read it. It's one of the only books I managed to make him read. And he really enjoyed it. So I wanted to confirm he loved it. Um, he agreed that it's a bit on the violent side, but blew his mind, could not put it down. He actually called me when he had about 50 pages left. And he was like, how could you do this to me? I'm so stressed right now. And yeah, he really, really enjoyed it. So wanted to throw it out there. It's good. Uh, even though I made that joke in my best. Basically in that video, I was joking that it was the worst book he had ever read. He was ashamed that was his daughter, blah, blah, blah. It, it was just a joke. But yes, he loved it. So I was really excited to read something else by him. And no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I giving this a generous three stars. I feel like I can't help but compare it to Reasonably Tears. And I feel like everything I loved in Reasonably Tears isn't in this one. It's equally violent, which again, not my thing with like contemporary settings, but you have this man, he's desperate, he has a rough past, went to prison in the past, and he's now trying to, you know, be a lawful man and help his family survive. Unfortunately, things are rough at the moment and he is forced to go and do like one last job. And everyone is so dumb, <laughs> which I'm assuming that the average criminal, you know, low criminal, uh, aren't probably the smartest, but it's rough for him. It's rough. Unfortunately, it didn't have as many interesting conversations as Reasonably Tears. I feel like the, the author was handling these conversations about like racism, homophobia super well. And there's a little bit in here about generational trauma, but I feel like it could have went further to make it more interesting and I didn't care about the characters, which again, reasonably tears. I really found the characters attaching even though they were super morally gray. In this case, I ended up liking the main character less and less and by the end, I hated him because of what he does at the end. I hated him. So yeah, I unfortunately didn't really care for that one. So if you like this one, definitely try Reasonably Tears. And if you love Reasonably Tears, I personally would kind of skip it, honestly. I will try something else by him. I believe he's coming out with another book soon. So I'll pick that up. And if it doesn't work, I will just assume that Reasonably Tears was a one hit wonder for me. We'll still rave about it, recommend it all the time. But yeah, this was, this was not it for me and that's okay. Then I finished one of my new all-time favorite book, I Who Have Never Known Men, which this was fantastic. This is an adult dystopian. I didn't really mention. This was obviously a thriller. <laughs> adult thriller. Uh, but yes, dystopian. I love sci-fi. I love dystopian. And this one was so unique. At first, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because you found this woman. She is part of a group of 40 women that are basically in prison in this room there are three guards they don't speak to them they just you know bring them food and prevent them from really having that much interaction with each other and one day something happens and they manage to escape and 
you know, will they get answers? Because they don't remember how they got there, what's going on. And because the main character is by far the youngest, she doesn't really remember what happened prior to being in this room. And it makes the story so unique and interesting. I feel like as soon as they leave the room, I just couldn't put it down. And I feel like I'm usually very vocal about my hatred of open endings and just things where you don't get really every answer. You don't get every answer in here. I'm going to keep this big, obviously, to not spoil anything. But I still was completely obsessed. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. But I loved it. <laughs> So much so that I will be buying a French edition whenever I can um, to reread it in French because it was written in French originally. And the main character, page one, makes a comment about, I don't understand why people don't, you know, learn the language to read the books in the, <laughs> the language that they were originally written in. That's just how she is. And I felt personally attacked. <laughs> So I will be reading it. Unfortunately, I looked at the editions. I couldn't find one that I liked and I've been raving about it. And I don't know if it's us, but um, I can't find it anywhere anymore. It's sold out literally everywhere. So um, I'm happy that you guys are reading it. Note to self though, buy the book before talking about it because five stars. Actually, you know what? Help me decide which edition I should get because I can't decide because none of them I really like. There's this one. This is the one I was going to get because it was the easiest one for me to find. It was at uh, Indigo. It was like $10, $12. It was going to be perfect. I'm just not personally a huge fan of people in my covers, even though there is someone on there, but super pretty. This one works with the vibes. I was going to settle for this one. Then we have the green one, which very um, artistic, I guess. This was published in the 90s, so you get the vibes, right? Not a big fan, but you know, if I could find it for cheap, I would have picked it up anyway. And then we have this butt ugly, literally. Like, wh what is this? Why the butt cheeks? I don't understand. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the book content. Anyway, um, we'll not be getting this one. And there was this other one. I think this one is just available in France. I haven't been able to find it for like under $40 and like crazy shipping. I think it's pretty, but there's just too much writing, too much going on, even though I like the picture. So yeah, like I said, I think I'm going to settle for the first one I mentioned because it was the easiest for me to find. Not anymore. It's sold out. To be fair, it's an older book, so they probably didn't have that much in stock. But yeah, I will have to go in store in person or just wait. Either way, I will be rereading this in 2023 because I'm obsessed. I need... I, now that I know what happens, I need to just reread it and just be in awe the whole time. I, this is super depressing. I should have said that. I should have said that. I feel like it's usually the case with dystopians though, but yes, highly recommend this. It's beautifully be bleak. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. This was part of a vlog where I was attempting to find a couple like favorites last second before I did my best books of 2022. Obviously this made it to my most surprising because I picked it up just because of the name and the cover, like the title. Super original. Um, and then the second one I picked for that vlog was this one, which I DNF'd. So I did not finish it. Giovanni's Room by Jim Baldwin. I had seen interviews with the author and the vibes I was getting from him were really positive. And I got to a scene that made me put the book down because it was just so violently misogynistic. And I know that just because there's a portrayal of misogyny book doesn't mean the author is misogynistic. But like, I didn't expect this at all because you're following this uh, man and he's bisexual. It's you know, back in the day in the 50s. So obviously controversial and he's in this relationship for the first time with another man who is also bisexual possibly because he has been with women. And what they say is just so violently misogynistic. I'm going to put it on the screen. I don't even really want to talk about this. Um, Just basically you'll have sex with women, but he's judging them for wanting to have equal rights and like saying that they should be beaten up. And it just made me feel super uncomfortable. And again, I was expecting this to be a really good book. And I know that just because a man is bisexual doesn't mean he's not misogynistic. But like, I just don't want to read this. That's my point. Like, I get that it could be realistic, but I don't find it interesting to read that. I've been trying to avoid content like that as much as possible. And it's not what I expected when I picked it up. It is technically part of my pile of shame for now. I will probably try to give it a second shot. Like I'm aware that like the men saying most of these things is not necessarily a good person, but like, I don't find it fun and I read for fun. So meh. I did finish some non-fictions because I felt safe 
reading those knowing that they are not part of my best and worst books of the year. <laughs> so I finished finally this huge brick to Jean, which I read actually another book by the author earlier this year, um, the one about cancer. So I wanted to read this other one about genetics because he just came out with another one about cells, which I will try to read in 2023, but I wanted to go through the ones that have been on my shelf for years. And this was good. Um, this is probably a four star for me because somewhere in the middle, like a third to like half of it, my interest went so down that I thought I was going to not finish it. I just can't hear one more time the whole history portion about the peas. I... <laughs> I've read and heard about it way too many times. I find it really, really boring now, but it's not the book's fault. It's just, you know, when you read about a certain topic, like beginner level of these topics, eventually it gets very repetitive. So yes, I did flip flop with the physical book and the audiobook. It was fine. I'm giving it four stars because it got much better. And unfortunately, not the book's fault. I just feel like I want the leftover like what happened in the last couple of years I mean after this book was published so yeah it was good it was good I don't feel like it's a must read as much as the cancer one I feel like I always see it like you know if you read nonfiction, you should absolutely read it it was okay it was okay the last book that I completely finished was The Three Musketeers by Alexandre Dumas I read it in French because why not and this completely changed my mind about The Musketeers I've always seen them as like heroes, the good guys, you know, like I feel that's what you think when you think of Three Musketeers. They're kind of douches. Like they're they're not like if they have money, they're just spending it, even if it's not really theirs, and just kind of asses. And D'Artagnan is no better. Like the, the main character, he has anger issues and he just flip-flops who he likes very fast. And I just I don't know. The writing was great though. And I know it's technically part of a series, but I don't know if I'm going to continue or not. I'm giving it four. I feel like I might be a bit generous with it, but I enjoy the writing. I feel like the author is good, but preconceptions <laughs> about the story and the characters just really affected my enjoyment. Because again, I don't you think they're seen as heroes in general? Like nobody thinks of them as bad guys. And I kind of, kind of did after reading the book. So yeah, it was fine. I liked it, but the characters are ugh, douche canoes. Now, let's talk about the ones that I'm currently reading. Uh, two nonfictions. This one is entitled How Male Privilege Hurts Women. This I've seen on so many lists so many times, and I finally found a copy of it. I mean, Bright Spine. They're easier to find uh, when you shop secondhand. So I have been actually annotating. I started doing that with some nonfiction underlining sections. Who am I? I've always been very opposed to drawing or writing in my books. I'm making, you know, it's one step in that direction. And this is absolutely infuriating. Absolutely infuriating. It's about entitlement from uh, men in the patriarchy for an array of different things. For example, um, the entitlement of privileged men, entitlement on sex, consent, medical care, bodily control, and yeah, it's enraging, straight up enraging, but it's good. I only have like two chapters left, so I will be done in January and it's good. I know the author has written a lot of books on a topic. I appreciate how many like notes in like, uh, she refers to a lot of different like articles, other books. So if you want to explore a certain topic, a certain chapter that is in here, you can go ahead and check those out. So yes, yeah, so far so good. Obviously, I'm not done, so I'll let you know next month, but so far it's good. And I am currently listening to Toxic Positivity. Why can I not say it properly? Because it's the same word in French. Um, <laughs> I'm 60% into the audiobook. The audiobook is like six hours, so I'm going to be done in like two days. But so far, I'm enjoying it. I feel like Toxic Positivity... <laughs> I cannot say that word. Positivity. Um, I hate it. I've always hated it, but I felt like it was very taboo to say that and I'm glad that it's starting to become more acceptable to talk about how it's not useful. Being told that other people have it worse or to have happy thoughts or to be grateful, it could be worse. And I've always hated that and I'm glad that it's becoming, like I said, a bit more acceptable to mention how toxic it is and how it's completely unhelpful. I feel like nowadays it's been repackaged a little bit into the whole like manifestation thing. 
stop. If it's working for you, often you're you are already very privileged and that's why these good things are happening to you. Um, but I appreciate that the author is including practical things. So for example, a uh, real life example with her patients, obviously anonymously, in saying how uh, people said these things to them and they would have rather hear this. So very practical examples. Also, she includes some studies. So for example, the whole grateful things, they've studied if it actually makes a difference. Like for example, for cancer patient, like does it actually help? So she talks about these things. So it's really, really interesting. Um, very quick. So, so far it's pretty surface level. So we'll see what happens for the last 40%. <laughs> but so far I'm enjoying it. So would recommend it if that's something that you want to explore more. I've been trying to find interesting topics, like starting with like small beginner friendly versions on the topic and then eventually if I find some that I really like I go more in depth. I did a video reviewing all 30 of the ones I had read throughout the year except for the three in this video. I'll include them in next year's version and it's been really interesting to find again certain topics that I like. Some of them just one book was enough to satisfy my craving are the ones I want to explore more. So yes so far so good uh, with these two. So as you can see, this month was really all over the place for me. Yes, an all-time new favorite. So we're very happy about that. I will harass you until every single one of you read it. And uh, the rest was kind of... But like I said, I feel like my own mood affects my reading. And I wasn't trying to find a bunch of new favorites because I was so busy. <laughs> I could not have dedicated much time to them. So I'm really excited for next month. Definitely subscribe because my January TBR is going up soon. And I'm so excited to start all of these challenges with you very nervous, especially about the read it or unhaul it. I'm currently, spoiler alert, uh, doing another one of the reading why sci-fi and fantasy is going to go up first week of January because I wanted to do a little bit of a decluttering in that section because I have so many that have been on my shelf for like five years and so far it's been interesting. That's all I'm going to say. So thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see an upcoming video very soon. Bye. Bye.